and welcome to Frankly Speaking with Lynn Franks and Friends. I am Lynn Franks, your host, and in this episode, I sit down with my friend Simone Roche, MBE, the CEO and founder of Northern Power Women, and talk to her about how she launched this platform, Ask for Passion, to connect and engage with people about gender equality. It all began in March 2015 when Simone took the first steps in creating a business that delivers a message to accelerate gender diversity across the north of England, offering engaging opportunities to women to be seen and promote their achievements. From this, Northern Power Women was born. Hello and a big welcome to my friend Simone Roche, all the way from Liverpool to Somerset where I am. And this is episode 11 of my podcast, Frankly Speaking, with Lynn Franks and Friends. And I'm so delighted to have the opportunity to delve into the extraordinary career that you have had, Simone, and and our history together and all the achievements that you've done up north as the founder of Northern Power Woman and as the founder of Northern Power Futures and all sorts of other things which we're going to be talking about. Simone, hi. Oh, Lynn, it's lovely to see you. Lovely to hang out on this wonderfully sunny morning. It is sunny. Actually, I should, I should say Simone Roche MBE. Sorry, I <laughs> slightly forgot that out. A well-deserved MBE that was. So we were just, uh, before we started uh, recording, remembering how we first met, and you have a much better memory than me, so you were saying, you were saying we met at the Hospital Club International Women's Day. Yeah, I remember it was the first ever International Women's Day event that I'd been to. I was, I'd kind of discovered this gender equality world that I had never really been in, having been in the military and hospitality industries. And I remember going to this event one day thinking, well, we'll, we'll go and have a look. I'll go and, you know, sort of partake, be an observer. I was on my own. And then I wasn't on my own. I sort of found that, you know, and you use the word tribe, you know, of the years that we've met and I remember it was you know it was actually on International Women's Day at in in the fabulous um you know that fabulous venue and I remember June Sarpong was there Vivian Westwood was there oh, that's right. uh, you know you had all manner Dr Linda yeah. Papadopoulos all Linda those, Papadopoulos oh. and the green, room, the green room was really happening very very sad to say that the hospital club which was actually the venue for so many events I did and we were together at and, in, and such a supporter of women is no longer with us <gasps> in Covent Garden. Did you not oh, know? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, no. Sue, it was Sue, wasn't it? Sue who used to well, run Sue, that. Yeah, well, she went some time ago you know, to other great pastures, but... Um, Unfortunately, it closed during COVID. Another oh, uh, and that's a real tragedy of like you know of, of many tragedies over the last eighteen months because that was such a it was literally a hive. It of, was. Uh, it and was. that day, I just remember I was so intentional and so attracted to this power and energy that was in that space and I remember being in your session thinking I need to talk to this woman this woman is phenomenal this this woman is is never done this woman is is constantly um evolving and creating innovating and making change and you inspired me from the you had me you had me at hello Lynn oh bless you well you inspire me too I have to say the work that you've done since we've met as well as before so you were just mentioning that you were in the military so you started off at 18 in the navy and you went from being um i forgot what it was you started as very low oh you were started as a radio operator and here you are back with, <laughs> with your headphones on so uh, you started as a radio operator and then you went up the ranks and you ended up being um what was it a lieutenant very important i know now you've got an even bigger role as an honorary which we'll talk about later. So that was very interesting because, as you say, it's clearly a man's world, really. And then you went from there to putting on events. You worked with Aintree Racecourse. You worked with Blackpool Pleasures Beach and uh, the new Echo Arena. So you were doing events, building up, but very much based in Liverpool. And then you started getting involved with People First, which was a trade organization based in London do you want to talk a little bit about that yeah it's, it, I think I always think it's a it's a really interesting journey and I think if I'd have thought now you know looking back 30 years would I be here talking to you um, around you know our career in gender equality and the passions and the purpose that we have I would never have believed it because I didn't I you know I never felt sort of 
um, you know, I didn't grow up. I grew up with really strong female role models, but I didn't feel as though I was disadvantaged at any point, even in the military. You know, like you say, very much a man's world. By the time I'd gone through the ranks, I was one percent of females as a as a uh, driving ships and all that kind of thing. But um, it really never felt dis, you know discriminated against for being a female. I did for being northern. There was definitely a class <laughs> thing in those days. You know, yeah, definitely the accent thing. And I remember being kind of called out to attend something called effective communication technique and I marched down the hill literally got there and they're like oh you're fine your accent is fine and they judged me on a postcode and it I remember feeling wow that that's and it was but it was the days of you know this is um you know early 90s it was still the days of BBC English it was still the days where there were no presenters on on the TV that were anything other than probably a white man with a a, a very sort of Middle Queen's English accent. yeah so but yeah it's Oxbridge it, it, in fact it, well but I did I, I kind of left the Navy and I was I'd got involved in so much I think that definitely set me up for the whole future so I got involved everything in the Navy I volunteered for everything got in, involved in loads of events so I think that became my passion of curating events connecting people putting energy into things and so that has been and that still is my thing giving people that platform and a stage and amplifying a voice that's exactly your thing and that's what you've always done and the generosity with which you do it as well has always been so noticeable to me um, and what I want to talk to you today specifically as we move on a bit is how to start a movement because you have started kind of a number of movements really but right now of course it's the biggie and you it's interesting that you talk about accents and then you come back to starting Northern Power Women um, and I was so you were working in London. I used to bump into. I didn't bump into you. We had meetings actually, and you'd always have your little suitcase trailing behind <laughs> you. You worked so hard. You'd come up on the train, get into Euston Station or Kings Cross, whichever, one, and then you'd be all over London, rushing to do as much networking and meetings as you possibly could, and then you'd sort of stay up somewhere for the night on some uncomfortable sofa, carry on doing the meetings and then get your little bag and off you went back to Liverpool. And I never knew where you found that energy from. Well, you were young and full of enthusiasm, I guess, but it was amazing. And, and I remember also because you and your lovely husband, Rob, live on a boat in the Liverpool docks. And you, I remember at one time, was actually were looking for a mooring in London to bring the boat down with you. And of course that, that didn't happen and you're very firmly entrenched now back in Liverpool and happily so. So how did that switch happen? Um, yeah, it's a really interesting. I forgot about, yeah, that's exactly what we wanted to do when we, we built a boat and we wanted to put it in um, the dock uh, near um, Catherine's, Catherine's that's the one yeah. yes that's it I couldn't remember that uh, and because I was spending all my time like you say damaging my rotator cuff within an inch of its life because it's spent the whole when you're only down for one day you've got to pack it all in because it's so expensive when you're working for yourself as well sure. it's uh, you know to sort of get all that traveling but I think I think all of that energy and all of that uh, I think it was really matched with intent and sort of a deliberate passion about connecting people and bringing people together. Um, I, I absolutely fell into gender equality by mistake by working for this organization, People First, in, in London. Um, and I remember going to this networking event um, when they started this women first kind of campaign as part of People First. And it was full of, there's a room, probably about 60 women drinking warm wine, but being but almost not, not bitching, but it was very sort of negative. It was a negative vibe. And I thought, oh, I thought, oh, actually, this is what, what will this solve? What's yeah. the problem we're going to solve here? Because actually we can all get together and, you know, we can all have those days where we're like, oh, for goodness sake, this, this and this. But actually, I've always been that. Right. What can we do? I've what never can we heard do? you be negative ever in the whole time I've known you. <laughs> oh, but, but sometimes, you know, and you just I just thought, no, this is not going to solve, is it? This is not going to solve or accelerate gender equality. You know, this is not going to do that. And I think my mission started that day. I looked around that room, I saw some phenomenal humans. Um, and I, you know, one of my first thoughts was, where are the men as well? Where, where are the men in this conversation? And where are the young people? And I think everything from that day, looking back at my starter career, not really understanding what, what on earth I wanted to do, to taking it to the moment I are now is all kind of, all makes sense now. Don't get me wrong, along the way it's not, sense well, well, I, I can see the flow the natural flow and I think when we're open like you are and like I am to putting out our vision and just 
seeing what comes in, there is synchronicity and it does flow in. And I can so clearly see it in your in your story, very clearly. And it was, it was about collecting. It was collecting the good people, collecting the stories and the role models. Everybody is a role model to someone. And I think that became sort of my little mantra, my little mission. You know, I have a, we all have a superpower, don't we? We all have a superpower. What, we, what we're good at doing is often what we love doing as well. And, and for me, it was the, the giving people a platform and a stage in the events. Well, I want uh, to say that because I, I, I've been working with my power of seven archetypes over the last um, few years, actually. And they're all part of ourselves. I'm wearing Wisdom Keeper today. I'm trying to, of course, on the podcast, you can't see what I'm wearing, but I'm wearing one of my T-shirts, which have got the vision of the Wisdom Keeper on it. And again, on the podcast, you can't see this, but I'm going to send this to you, which for those who watch this later on YouTube, this is um, the Sky Dancer. And it's this beautiful woman dancing around. And you are the Sky Dancer in my archetype, in my power of seven. And the Sky Dancer is kind of the tantric networker the relationship builder who does everything and brings people together from a place of grace as opposed to what am I going to get out of it and to me that's exactly who you are it's always like what can I do to help this person what can I help to bring this together what and you are the epitome or the absolute example of what I call the feminine way to create business which is without feeling competitive without feeling you know I've done this for you what are you doing for me you are just full of generosity. We'll come back to it, but I'm telling you. That's how I <laughs> that's, but, but you've always said that. You used to use the phrase, uh, you are all about goodwill dollars, you know? Oh, yeah. So you always use that. And I, I thought and you that, used it. Oh, we uh, used it. We used it. Yeah, I think I said something and you repeated it back to me or uh, when we were in the, the yeah. wonderful, uh, the beehive uh, lounge that you used to, um, you know, I mean, make magic happen. Yeah. But, but there was, the, but, uh, that's, it's really interesting because there was that passion about, I know when you bring people, together with intent and with purpose and with energy because there's no point just coming together to have sometimes you need a pity party but you know actually you bring that energy together and the magic happens and it you we can all lift each other up and we all need to kind of keep checked in and I think the 18 months that we are we're currently you know sort of living is, is has been testament to that but one of the important things to me as well that I saw was actually going out of our lanes as well so it wasn't I was working in the the, the industry body you talked about was hospitality tourism and it, I was really um, interested in bringing the cross sector approach in it because we can all learn from different, you know, um, different sectors, different, you know, levels, different, everyone's got some wisdom that they can pass on. And equally, it takes some of the non-competitiveness out of it. So people are more likely to collaborate. So I brought in the likes of, you know, people that we know, like Carol Bagnall from HSBC and Marion yeah. from MasterCard, these amazing women that yeah. Lynn and I, you know, Jacqueline Gold from, uh, you know, well, I know. You got me and encouraged me to start my In Conversations, In Frank's In Conversations with Extraordinary Women. And in that period, I did interview on your platform, Jacqueline Gold, and um, uh, we were talking about... Caroline. Carol, yeah, Caroline McCall, which was an incredible coup to get her. She was, at that point was, wasn't she running Easy, Easy Jet, Jet now? Yeah. And now she's running ITV, amazingly successful woman. So to get her sitting down... And then we had um, Margaret Hodge, MP. Oh, she was brilliant, wasn't she? Fantastic woman, real feminist, strong powerhouse who says it where it is. And, uh, and Debbie White, who at that time was one of the CEOs of Sodexo, which is one of the world's biggest um, hospitality organisations and businesses. So it was a, just in that short time we did. And then you, then you got involved with TEDx and you put on TEDx Whitehall, which was one of the first TEDx events in London at all. And again, you managed to get all this incredible group of women together. I was spoke at the first one, 2012 that was, that was one date I do remember. And I spoke about the return of the wise woman and here am I sitting in my wise woman t-shirt, uh, which can't be seen on my podcast. But again, you were sort of ahead of your time. We worked together. I spoke um, and did a kind of nerve wracking talk. I have to say, when I think back, because Ted, Ted talks had just started and we all knew we could only speak for 18 minutes. and. I think I could do it now a bit easier than I did it then. I remember sitting, looking at my notes all the time. Anyway, it was a fantastic opportunity that you generously gave me. And then from there, you got to the point as Northern Power Women. So how did that come from um, the trade organization and uh, Women First that you're working with? 
But it's, it's really interesting. You know, I've never had any desire to work for myself because it's a scary world out there, you know, in, in and, and especially being based up in the north when obviously so much is very, particularly around gender, is very much London centric and Westminster centric. And, and so I was really wary, you know, it hadn't even come to my mind. And then it only takes one person to say something that sows a seed, literally a seed. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then all of a sudden it, you, you start to think and you start to think a bit differently. And, and at the same time as sort of this conversation was happening, uh, there were changes happening within the organization. They started to talk about fundraising and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm not gonna run around and do that. That again, I only want to do stuff that will add value. I only want to do stuff that will shift or make change for good, you know, and empower uh, individuals and organizations. And so um, at the time that this was sort of, this change was happening, I was curating my next TEDx Whitehall Women and, there was a, a woman called Lara Morgan, who I think you've probably come across as well. Uh, in, uh, me to her, yeah, yeah, invented the pre-threaded sewing kit or something like that, sold her business <laughs> for 23 million or whatever. And it was her, when I was sort of pursuing her for Ted, she went, um, you need to do this for yourself. This is flipping ridiculous or something a bit stronger. This is you, this is your brand. This is all about you. You should take this forward. And I remember going, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine, it's okay. But it's sewed, it's sewed. And you know, if someone had the belief- so seed. And, and you- I remember equally that the company that you were working for were not treating you with the respect that I considered you deserved. And it was time for you to go as an independent. And I think sometimes it is time to fly, but you don't know it. And it takes yeah. your tribe around you. And uh, I, I asked you, would you come and speak at the uh, the event? And we had Marion King, who was the- Was this the, the first one in Liverpool? Yeah. yeah. And Marianne that was, yeah. well, well, in essence, that was the precursor to Northern Power yes. Women. There's a big festival happening. That's and right. and I remember- festival. And I asked yeah. you to do a women's event. Yeah. Well, and you got- Marion King was running Mastercard, wasn't she? She was. Uh, yeah, we had other amazing. Yeah, with like Melanie Richards, who's the vice chair of KPMG, and Andy Woodfield from PwC. We had Claire Sweeney there, the broadcaster presenter. We had all manner, but it was a really mixed, you know, sort of audience as well. Because it's that's for me is important. You know, gender equality neither sits at the top or the bottom; it sits across all our world and all our life, kind of thing. And I think everyone needs to be part of the movement. And wasn't, wasn't the uh, new at that point the new mayor of Liverpool there who was yeah. a woman a black woman yeah a huge breakthrough as well yeah so it's been it, it was for me about you know having those different stories on the platform and I remember um there's a young woman in the audience uh she put her hand up and she was like said to one of the speakers oh I want to come and work for you and um and, and Lara got off the stage gave her a card and said come and shadow me and she did and three months later she set a business and it was it was almost like the series of those events that happened post that because an event should never be about one day no. TEDx is never about one day everything should be about a legacy and so it was from that day I went this cannot stand here alone that was the first time I'd ever done an event up north you know anything outside of London to be honest and I thought actually you know what we need to change the geography or add to the job you know add where the conversation is coming from I wanted to unearth all these voices all these role models and not just have oh this is the way it is you know I wanted people to be part of the conversation so I think that's where the, the movement started I created um for the following March ready for change so ready for change was in essence going to be um a, a one-day conference uh, but I used the hashtag northern power women and I used ready for change and I didn't want women in the title because I didn't want to exclude women who didn't think that this was for them um or I didn't want to exclude uh, men I wanted it to be very sort of um everyone to be Inclusive. part of the movement yeah. yeah but and I remember one day um uh, somebody else who you know Ruth Shaw she was at the foreign office she She's now at the Premier League. She said, she contacted me and said, you've got two brands here. You've got, and I said, oh, but you know, and she went, but look at your social media and the Northern Power Women hashtag had been really, really sort of connected and owned, I think. And I think from the minute I changed, and it was only six weeks before the event, and I changed the hashtag, and that was the day it no longer became an event or a conference. It, it became, became a movement. Yeah. And I remember as soon as I saw that, I, I think I dropped you a note just to say, brilliant, genius. Because I must say, at that point, the government had announced Northern Power, um, and uh, not that they did much with it, but you did. You got onto it, met, took it over, took ownership, Northern Power Women, and that has, without question, become a movement. 
and I think people took ownership of it, you know, and I remember it was the same year that the Women's Equality Party was being formed. Right. Uh, and I remember being invited, I think Joe Swinson and Catherine Mayo at this dinner that they'd invited. And, and it was when they were just talking about it, they'd muted. And I think it following the wow, the, the amazing wow festival. Yeah, it all happened at wow, yeah. Yeah, and I think this is some weeks later. And uh, I remember I'd sort of written some kind of manifesto about Northern Power Women and then the Women's Equality Movement. I thought, well, I'm not, I'm obviously not going to compete with that, but actually we're also not political. It's very apolitical. So I'm like, right, so I changed sort of my language so that we could support the Women's Equality Party, but not be political, if, if you know what I mean. And so and so it was. And for me, in those those early days, it was about how do we really, from the North, lead on gender pay gap, you know, which, you know, sadly is... I feel presumably as, far worse in the North than even in the South. It's bad yeah, in the South. I, Absolutely. But I feel I am worried that's kind of gone away again, but that's, you know, um, yes. over this period. But for me, it was about creating a massive hall of role models. It was creating, it was outwardly going out and recruiting men as agents of change. I knew I needed that, especially, you know, in this part of the world, I knew there was more male leadership that I knew that we needed to engage and influence and get the good guys. Because for me, the good guys need to help us extinct the dinosaurs. That's, that's what it's about. We're dinosaur slaying. That's what I'm trying to do. I wanted to create a really really great level platform for our young people to feel like there was hope you know so I wanted to you know wanted to engage them in the conversation I wanted to do a credible piece of research for the business school about gender equality um and as I say I, I wanted to just create this massive vision of um people that no one could ever look and say there wasn't anything for them they had to run away from the north because there wasn't anyone or any opportunity and that was a I suppose my initial kind of mission and to that was do when that. you also gave up the thought of moving down to London because you realized you loved where you were so much going on up north and you plugged straight into it or initiated a lot of it it really. was but you think about that power of your network and your community, a lot of what Northern Power Women was built on was all those years, all those years of running around with a suitcase, all those years starting off at the hospital club, our meetings, our sessions, everything that we did. I think you can never take anything that you've done on your way around. It's all, all becomes part of that. Yeah, that even your train journeys backwards and forwards where you'd meet all these interesting women. I'd, I'd get a text saying, I just... <laughs> So I think she could be really useful for you in what you're working on or something. I remember, I remember having a really impromptu meeting with um, James Timpson. So the Timpson, you know, he's just yeah. talked in the press this week about openly about menopause, which I thought was really interesting. Um, mm. And I remember coming back and sitting with him and I'm like, and, and it was the last train back, the nine o'clock train, which is always, I think to me, is still scandalous. That's the last train back because it does cut <laughs> short. You could have got in at least three more meetings. <laughs> <laughs> But I remember having this conversation with him. He was obviously for relaxed. I think he'd just gone to doing a, like an RSA lecture. So he was probably, you know, had a really, you know, just really good conversations with him. And he was always, I, I kind of always thought he was really good, you know, very authentic in his style. His, his dad, uh, you know, John Thompson is, is a real advocate for, for women as well. Um, so yeah, it's just really interesting to sort of have these conversations. But yeah, I did. I would be regularly picking people up on trains, but don't think badly of me. <laughs> Oh, you made some great contacts. So you started using, using the hashtag. At that point, I don't know how many people you were in contact with, how big your tribe was. I know that you were focusing on women leaders in the corporate world. That's where, as well as the, the good men, as you say, but there were lots of women leaders that were delighted to actually be acknowledged who were based up north. And how did you sort of bring them into what you were doing? How did you proceed? Well, again, it was the whole thing. Everything for me is about legacy. Nothing's ever about that one day. So that big launch of Northern Power Women, you know, was 300 people. And I thought, right, what, what do we do with this? How can I really make impact? People are really behind this. And the social media particularly, you know, I was on my own, you know, there was no other, you know, I had no team, but like yourself, we've been solo warriors for, for so long, haven't we? But, you know, yeah. we've got that passion. And um, uh, I thought, right, what is it that we do? And I thought, well, if I think about telling the story and actually it was James Simpson, he says, why don't you do an awards? And I'm like, there's lots of awards out there. Don't need to do that. And he says, well, you do it the way you want. You do it with your values and your authenticity. And that's what I did. So I thought, I actually, and, and, and to be honest, it, it became um sort of probably really key in what I did so a year after launching we had I think something around 680 nominations so it was more than we'd ever done at the Women First Awards that which was so, supposed to be a whole UK wide exactly so we did loads you know massive we then had 440 people attended the the very first awards and 
it was just it just had a sense of I did it you know I've always been very robust in that approach I'd done you know awards I'd created awards and conference and campaign for you know when I'd worked in London and I I kind of I could take every best but but the intention was that it was never about one night it was and that to this day is still the awards are almost the start and the end of the year there are a whole kind of evolution of you know, whether, you know, there's different ways people want to be spotlighted or can be spotlighted, you know, so I think it's it's important to find those different mediums. So we created the awards. So we have the, you know, sort of, and I wanted to be purposeful in the category title. So agent of change, person with purpose, you know, transformational leader. So it's very, brilliant. It, it sort of designed what it said, but the, the two things that I wanted to do to create the big noise was creating a power list and a future list. So everything's nominated. It wasn't about creating more girls clubs or anything like that to compete with boys clubs it was about genuine look at look in look in your communities look in your world and who is using their power for good power doesn't always mean you're at the top power for good and I think so we created a power list and it was a power 50 uh, and then each year we add to it so we don't you don't have to reapply because my logic is you can move to you know Mongolia and you could change sector but you can still be a northern power woman so that for me has been so powerful so now we're like 500 and odd in that that community but we're 70,000 community we're not a network or a um a membership I, it's a it's a living it's a breathing it's it a is. movement absolutely just brilliant so um you're doing your big awards next March and you in the meantime keep a lot of communication going how has as an event organizer and and a runner of a network how has this last 18 months been for you because you've obviously had to go online like the rest of us how's that worked for you um, I mean really observe we had to postpone the awards four days before last year oh. so that was you know and it was 950 people attending due to be the largest event celebrating gender equality in Europe so we'd had a real you know it's really grown you know yes. and so that was devastating because actually um, the most devastating thing was, you know, you suddenly have to look at your people and think, you know, we were just starting to grow, just starting to build partnerships. We're not funded. Like I say, we're not a membership or a network. I've, I've wanted to always do things a little bit differently. You know, I've wanted to do things. So I never want money to be a barrier to entry for people, um, which equally, you know, we've always had this conversation about money. I just give it away all the time, but it's, but there's something important about this being really authentic. So, so the first thing we had to do was sort of scale back you know, um, and I had to communicate with my people straight away, you know, and thankfully we managed to rehouse, you know, repurpose, you know, find jobs uh, for for all of our people, because it is a family, isn't it? This is a, this is yeah. a family. And 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 really put, then put our own oxygen mask on and go, right, what do we do? There's no point going out. Um, I didn't want to do anything too crass or too opportunistic. I wanted to be purposeful. So, 18 months on now I'm I feel really proud that I've been I think more purposeful than I've ever been um I don't miss the train rides I miss people uh but I think one of my big things was check in I was really worried about those senior corporate women the women who naturally have those mentoring conversations then then who naturally nurture who naturally enable who naturally sponsor I was worried about them having those people taking out their life face to face because there's something Carolyn McCall when you interviewed her I don't know if you remember this Lynn she talked really strongly I'll never forget that interview it's it it, it motivated me it motivates to me to this day that style of interview that you two did um and she talked about women need to talk eye to eye yeah to look each other whereas guys can walk down a corridor go to the loo make a brew not even look at each other once and do a bit of business whereas women have to be more focused and intentional and I remember her talking about that and I thought gosh she's so right um and, and I remember she she sort of talked about that really personal connection I, I've about read quite a lot of science on that it's really have, yeah it's, it's an absolute fact that men are more comfortable next to each other when they when, when they're exchanging and even then they don't exchange a sort of intimacy that women do very naturally, but we need to look at each other's. Uh, yeah. 
but I learned from that and I think there was so I wanted to check in on the checkers all those women who are doing amazing things I wanted to just check so I spent a lot of time doing that just picking the phone up or trying not to zoom because we're all getting a bit zoomed out you know trying not to phone and then I was really mindful of those young women the women the flyers the ones at the start starting to run around with their trolley cases and now all of a sudden isolating at home in their cool flats in city centers that they can't get out and I was really worried about those women as well so I started like a little drop in Wednesday winning Wednesday high five Friday and then we started doing some webinars and uh, we started a 12-week mentoring program because again um, I just wanted to do it very bite-sized 12 weeks three meetings because I felt like everything was in 12-week cycles so I've just been everything I've done why am I doing it I'm doing it because this will keep people connected it will keep people engaged it will keep people you know sort of feeling that you know sort of lifting them when we all need a lift you know so and then we did a leveling up report as well just to boot you know so I did I think I'm really proud and everything we did in that report we wanted to highlight and spotlight um the good stuff yeah you know because there has been good stuff we created a northern power futures podcast to listen to young people because that was important because I didn't want them to feel like there was no hope you know we we absolutely engaged in with the um the, after the the Black Lives Matter the, the the merger of George Floyd we were really intentional about seeking out our uh, women from black heritage and uh, women from black Asian minority ethnic um backgrounds and communities to have conversations and to amplify voices so we've been intentional we shifted our podcast to weekly to almost diarize and sort of be with people if you like mm. so I think um there's nothing I would change you know um and so throughout that because I mean the rate the way you do finance a lot of the work you do is by corporate sponsorship and partnership uh, and so did you keep a lot of your sponsors with you as you move uh, uh, well we we pretty well we had literally 18 months of no no money you know there has been and you know my, my husband you know you know northern yeah. power man rob uh rob had a heart attack 18 months ago and has yes. had to leave his yeah, his sure. role last year so it has been you know we could have our own like little sadness over here but you know we do have an alternative lifestyle living on a boat you know um and um you know you still got lots of fees to pay and stuff but it's a you kind of realize what's important and one of the most important things in my last sort of six months was buying a paddleboard <laughs> so you know I could get on that board and I can sort of switch off but financially partner wise it's you know it's, it's been tricky I think for everybody it's, yeah it's been but tricky you never never give up Simone in fact Gosh, no. what, what have you just been given on a oh yes you were given, you've been made an honorary lieutenant commander in the Navy in June 2020 because I saw your posts on social media and now you've got the full uniform and the cap and I know oh. how much you love being at sea or being on a boat or being on even on a paddleboard. I mean, you, you're where your heart place is. So that's that. Was I'm a mermaid, Lynn. I think. I think somewhere yeah. there's an inner mermaid. That that I mean, that was very. That was literally a, a you know a huge honour to. There's only sort of under forty of us in the in the in the world, you know, yeah. and it is very much an advocacy advocacy position. Only a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, on the board uh, on the panel selection panel uh, interviewing for the the captain of the sea cadet. So that you know sits really well with me as well. So yeah. you know, it's it's great. It's you know, I think you talked about the MBE earlier. You've got the your OB again flipping long overdue I'm not gonna lie you know but it's <laughs> but but it's but there's there's something about a sense of responsibility that comes with anything that you are awarded or something you've got to you know it's not so much you've got to I think it's just in you isn't it that you have to do good with it so for well, me I think, I think what we both of us I know are very committed to if you like doing good we'll have a you know whatever that means but being positive and giving back to our communities and what the OBE, the MBE, and other such honours allow us to do is to have that little bit more gravitas, I think. We can get taken a bit more seriously, especially me with my whole ad fad background. <laughs> I needed it. Do you but know, I think... I it's a, it's a story, isn't it? It's another story. It's another way that you can advocate. It's another, it's another way that it's... it's it, I think it goes back to using power for good. Yes, I agree. Absolutely agree with you. And now, um, apart from the fact that you're already planning next year in March and your big event, I mean, I don't know, I can't even work out what I'm doing next week. <laughs> I have to say. 
say I'm trying to get more organized because I've got involved now with um, taking on a mentorship role with some young women in Somerset Southwest area I mean who would Amazing. think I would end up living in the southwest because of course I was in Spain for a long time and you used to come out and visit me there yeah. and you used to love going to Spain You're oh I loved it yeah. I loved it it's funny isn't it you think um you know, day, your home in day was amazing. The retreats yeah. there were fantastic. You had a whole, you know, and well, you still have those friends, but you know, that was a whole kind of lifestyle out there. It was, it was, it was wonderful, but it's, I see you now in this whole new family um, environment community of Somerset. I feel like that is you coming home as well. Like, that's what I observe outwards Thank you. looking in. I completely agree. I mean, the Southwest for me has been coming home and, uh, I don't feel the re any necessity like you when you were coming up to London all the time with your little bag. I was on the plane going backwards and forwards between Mallorca and London on a weekly basis at times. And now I feel like I'm happy being here in the UK. I love the countryside. I love nature out here. I love the coastline. It's so only an hour away from me. And yeah, I really appreciate being exactly where I'm supposed to be. And it is like a family. And of course, I've got my seed hub and my seed store, seed cafe. And somebody reminded me the other day that they said, don't you remember you were talking about opening up a cafe at one yeah, point? Yeah, I remember it. I you you talk, I remember you talked to, I think, didn't you have discussions with Tesco about that? Or, you know, there was... Um, I was, well, I worked with Tesco. Was, yeah. While, and I was talking to them about doing stuff within their stores for women and women's empowerment on a local level. They still should be doing that, actually. But anyway, <laughs> and of course now... Um, you're doing some fantastic new projects. Well, lots of them, but the Be Heard platform, another new platform, another new movement really interests me. And I don't quite understand it. I know it's about amplifying voices, but it's not about just women, is it? Do you want to no. explain about Be Heard? No, and actually I would really be grateful for your world uh, and your voices on, on this. So I'm constantly asked, you know, um, oh, I'm looking for someone to speak on, you know, the money program or, you know, Sky News, or we need somebody to talk about this and 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 actually again it since it steps back to why I wanted Northern Power Women because I wanted to change the geography and the voices that we were we were listening in and hearing and so be heard last it was it was part of um it was last uh, autumn I think I'd just come off with a producer at Five Live um, wanted to talk to someone in the hospitality industry loads of contacts loads of whatever and actually there's almost sometimes people will step back oh oh no oh no I'm a bit nervous about that and I thought you know what we've got to do better at this you know and there is definitely a female trait about not always you know wanting to have your voice heard but I thought no I know we've got great voices great spokespeople great you know sort of uh, people with side hustles and stories so it's not always about talking about your company results it's about how you, you use your voice whether it be in a meeting in a podcast in an interview with a student whatever and I wanted to almost start this journey that we are making it easier for producers who are often working at you know five minutes an hour's notice to try and find someone I wanted to help them to to make the media better as in better represented and we're in a world now where there is no excuse because you can do it on zoom um so there's no excuse so I created a be heard initially just a google form and then I, um, we had a, a, a virtual awards this year with a lovely lady called Nina Hussain, who's a brilliant journalist uh, from, um, from Yorkshire who hosted our awards and she was fantastic. And she's like, oh my gosh, I've got to introduce you to my boss at IT, ITN News. And I talked to her about this. I said, I want to make more of this platform. And we did a campaign on International Women's Day uh, called NPW Live, which is all about amplifying voices. And we just asked people to record like a, a three minute TED style video and we wanted to almost use as a resource, but get people out of their comfort zone. I thought this get... wasn't just Northern, because I know I No, was... yeah, it was everyone. Um, and we didn't want it to be, um, you know, sort of just talking about, you know, your day job. We wanted, it didn't matter. It was almost just to come out and speak. We thought we'd get 20, we got 150. Wow. And it was that that became the springboard for Be Heard. And we thought, right, we're going to make a searchable platform um, that, you know, you can go on to as a booker. So if you're a, a corporate event organizer, you know, or you're looking for speakers on, you know, someone to talk on menopause or building community cafes or, you know, changing your lifestyle, it doesn't matter what it is. So we've de designed a really easy sort of, sort of sign up process. So it, we want to make it comfortable. So we talk about, you know, what's your side hustle or what's your, you know, it's what, so it's not always about what you do in your day job, is it? It's about those experiences. And that's what comes across you're not it's not going to be Jeremy Paxman isn't it every day in the media you're not getting that hard time it could be something like you know it could be on the this morning show it could be anything or it could be a um, like I say a student um 
uh, production. So, so Be Heard is a growing movement to amplify voices. So, so, so it's a movement. It's not an agency as such. It's a, it's actually a, a movement, a giveaway movement. It, it, it again. It, yeah, I know. I know there does need to be though. We're looking, we are looking at a subscription. So we're just making it free at the moment while we build up the, the, the numbers in there. We've got a few hundred on there. So you can go in and search for, you know, speakers on there, but, but we do want the, we do feel like there will be a subscription model um, in there as well. So that you can yeah, provide voices and, but we think it's a great place that a corporate organization can put their, if you like their senior representatives on there, but it's a, a really good space that they can put forward their talent, put forward their middle leaders their emerging future talent that they can use that as a platform for people to use their voice so it's it's almost so it starts off as a database but we're building a um, um that platform with it you know so working with the likes of some of the media agencies to give some of that experience as well so that's where the subscription will come in and i've said it on your podcast now so you can hold me to account on yes, that <laughs> i will but you've done it again you are so visionary you are so full of ideas and i do think that women particularly do need to be heard. And there is still a huge amount of fear from a lot of the women I speak to, meet, work with, on being heard, on having that confidence to stand up and speak publicly or even on Zoom. I mean, I think the funny thing is, Zoom has probably broken down a lot of those fears because speaking on a screen, obviously, well, you know, it still can be very intimidating. It still can. So I think it's a fantastic service to be, offering this platform for people, but women particularly, to have the opportunity. It's it's, it's eighty percent women on there at the moment, you I know, saw. and and I'm always proud of that because we've got people from different walks of life, different stories, different levels, different abilities. Yeah. You know, that's what it is. We want to be representative, don't we? It's yeah. and it, this is global. You know, we got approached by CNN Africa this week about oh, it. So so I think there's a you know it's a growing it's a growing but it's simple. It's not a speaker bureau, but I think I think it will be one of those. That I think you can't plan almost too far ahead in this because I think we have to see who wants it and who how we can you know sort of really I amplify think, well listening to you and understanding it a lot better I think this could be your biggest project yet because yeah. it's global um, and the way that we are all using technology now and we are all working in a different way and it will never go back to how it was <laughs> But one of the things, and uh, we've actually created sort of like a, a, the brand around it, you know, is I've been heard, but then it's that I nominate. So I think this is one of the things that we all have to do for other people. Open a door, get someone to have their, put their voice forward, you know, because like, it, like we know, people are trying to find people at, at last minute and it could just be you. Yeah, brilliant. Oh, I see this growing and growing. And can I say what, 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 um, sort of future do you think we are going to see in the business world because you're so immersed with so many big corporations international corporations as well as individual entrepreneurs and women in media and so many people across the whole gambit of, of business really where do you see it all going how do you think are we going to go back to working in offices which i, I don't think we are but what how what's the future in your eyes yeah, we did a survey a few weeks ago on LinkedIn. Uh, we had about 1,050 or something responses, which was quite big, you know, for uh, you know, a few days out there. And it was 6% um, of people um, would opt to go back or to work from home full time. 3% only would opt five days a week in the office. Mm. But 67% uh, was the two to three days option. But interestingly enough, and we didn't give this option, but the biggest um, sort of rep, um, sort of comments in the chat were, you know what we really want? Just pure flexibility. So that's really interesting. I read, a, I read something recently, um, uh, Apple are actually saying, no, you've got to get back in the office. And I think I'd be really wary. I think we've proved a concept, you know, we've proved, look at these massive organizations that have been able to enable technology into homes we 100 have challenges around digital poverty and we've got to we've got to look at the that and the wider social mobility but lloyd's bank um so great one of our northern power women emily cox um fabulous woman um and she's very much around directorship around co her colleagues you know and they are their stance that that lloyds are taking is very much around a personal approach so it's not just two styles of working work from home or in the office it's it's there's a there's eight different styles of leadership you know oh so eight different styles of work style and it and they are taking an approach to identify that personally 
um, to every colleague within the business. And I think, wow, if that's, you know, and they're employing like 46,000 people, then if they can do it, then I think, you know, we've got to look, you know, we've got to innovate. Now is time more than ever to innovate. And I think the other thing that I think has really changed is leadership. We did done a piece of research with Teesside University and you look at the likes of um, Jacinda in New Zealand and, you know, you talk about Angela Merkel and, you know, Nicola Sturgeon, who, you know, is not everyone's necessarily a cup of tea, but the, the the communication and the leadership is very clear. It's been very sort of authentic, vulnerable. But one of the we did a session a few weeks ago. One of the big things was about listening. That was kind of one of those sense. So I think there's something that the world of work has got to listen. You know, you've got to listen. 68% of young people will make a decision on their future employer based on their purpose. So we've always been passionate about purpose. And, you know, I've been involved in, in something, again, a festival up here called the Good Business Festival. And I think it's all designed. It's profit and purpose and that is if I've I've always been purposeful but if the last year has taught us anything you know we we need to be more purposeful if we want to be those employer choices those entrepreneurs of choice it's all about making those purposeful decisions so I think there's more opportunities for collaboration I think now is the time that if now not when that we can really yeah the looking at I worry about things going back to 1950s Britain at some point, you know, when all of the homeschooling and the caring and the running around was, was in the women. Um, I think we've got to retain the flexibility. We've got to, we've got to retain the trust, Lynn, you yeah. know? Uh, so I think this is how we move forward. I see a difference in, you know, we've got to, you know, leveling up is the new buzzword after Northern Power House, isn't it? You know, leveling up is the, the new thing, but we've got to level up whereby, you know, you can, stay and you can mobilize wherever you want you know uh, you don't have to be in London you don't have to be in a city center you can work from where you are and you know not always have to have that rush hour which will help our mental health so I think there's a there's a time for good now there's a time that we have to it's not just leveling up the economy it's leveling up ourselves as well isn't it because our lives have become quite blurred over the last year you know my work-life balance has always been a bit rubbish but it's uh you know but it is a blare now, but we've got to try and, you know, make sure that, you know, I say to my team all the day, especially if it's a really fabulous day or we've had a period of incessant rain, I'm like, you have to get out today. You, you, get, you get out, you get some, you get some fresh air. It's really important because it's so easy to focus ourselves in front of these screens. So I no, think no, we've got, right. we've got to be kinder. We've got to be trusting and we've got to listen. Mm, beautiful. And that is the feminine way to do business, which is, of course, what both of us have been working towards for a long time. Simone, it is always such a pleasure. Ah, so to oh. talk to you, <laughs> yeah, you to hear your stories, to hear your latest ideas, to see them just growing and knowing that whatever happens, um, it's just going to get bigger and bigger, whatever you're doing. And you are you are a leader in so many ways, in every way, actually. So thank you very, very much indeed. Inspired by Simone and indeed other incredible women and men who start movements, who start change platforms, I'd like to suggest today's seed exercise is about you joining a movement yourself, maybe even starting one. Ask yourself, what are you most passionate about? Is it climate change, women's equality, LGBTQ rights, Black Lives Matter, or perhaps all of these? And start looking for like-minded women and men who together with you can truly create transformation in today's society. I have been inspired by, for many years by the poem The Low Road by feminist writer Marge Piercy. And I'd like to read out a few verses from that poem to show you what we can all do together. Two people fighting back to back can cut through a mob, a snake dancing file can break a cordon, an army can meet an army. Two people can keep each other sane, can give support, conviction, love, massage, hope, sex. Three people are a delegation, a committee, a wedge. With four, you can play bridge and start an organisation. With six, you can rent a whole house, eat a pie for dinner with no seconds, hold a fundraising party. A dozen makes a demonstration, a hundred fills a hall. 
A thousand have solidarity in your own newsletter. Ten thousand, power and your own paper. A hundred thousand, your own media and ten million, your own country. It goes on one at a time. It starts when you care to act. It starts when you do it again after they said no. It starts when we say we and know who you mean. And each day you mean one more. Thank you so much for listening and taking part. Remember, we put up these episodes of Frankly Speaking every two weeks and we hope to have you back with us again soon. If you like what you hear and want to learn more practical methods to help you plant the seeds in your own empowerment journey, then please subscribe to this podcast, rate and review it. Also, make sure to join our Seed Network if you haven't already and together with thousands of like-minded women, you will make friends, promote your businesses and share your stories. Visit seednetwork.com to find out more. Until then, see you next time. Bye.